So if animals can be happy, it stands to reason they can also be sad. This is Keiko, a killer whale, and the star of the movie Free Willy. The film was about liberating a captive whale, but Keiko himself is still exactly that. He was taken from the sea when he was just two years old, and he spent more than 18 years, including his movie career, in captivity. Keiko's life has been very hard. Uh, over the years, he's lived in a variety of different situations that weren't probably ideal for Keiko. Uh, in, that, in that type of humanistic term, it was quite sad. Um, we think that he may have been suppressed or depressed in those types of situations, and that may have caused some of the illnesses that Keiko had. But a rescue is underway. After more than a year of rehabilitation at the Oregon Coast Aquarium, Keiko has been sent home at last to his native waters off Iceland. There he goes. Yet he may never be able to live in the wild. For all of his adult life, he's never hunted to survive and never known the company of other whales. Good boy. Now it may be too late for him to learn, but hopes for a better future for Keiko are high. He appears from the human standpoint to be thriving in this environment. He's very active, much more so than he ever was before. But to actually get inside his brain and, and figure out what he's thinking and what he's doing, I can't do that, even though I'm here seven days a week and somebody's here 24 hours a day. Keiko may never experience all of the emotions an intelligent, highly social animal is capable of. I think a lot of people think as long as animals are healthy um, and they've got food and water, then really there's nothing else we need to worry about. But it's still possible that an animal could be caged and, for example, be strongly motivated to escape. An important question, of course, is, is where do we draw the line? Uh, which animals do we assume are capable of suffering and which ones are not? Uh, that's a very difficult question. On the one hand, we've got animals like wood lice, which certainly make choices, say, to go towards a damp place and away from a drier place. But they seem to do that by very simple rules of thumb. And on the other, you've got animals that are capable of learning quite complicated tasks in order to achieve what they want. Those are the animals, it seems to me, are probably using emotions to sort out what they should do next. And those are the animals that we should be most concerned about. If these animals are living by their emotions, we have some serious ethical problems to face. <laughs> 